general non-traumatic spinal deformities may either be a kyphosis, where there is an increased forward bending of the spine, or a scoliosis, where there is lateral curvature of the spine. What is scoliosis? It is a three-dimensional deformity characterized by lateral curvature of the spine, altered sagittal profile, as well as vertebral rotation. The rotation results in thoracic prominences due to secondary vertebral changes. Scoliosis is classified into primary versus secondary scoliosis. Primary scoliosis, there is a persistent fixed deformity in the spine that does not disappear with changes in posture due to a structural abnormality. Secondary scoliosis, scoliosis disappears when the underlying cause is removed. There is no rib hub or spinal rotation. The causes of primary scoliosis can be divided into the following. Idiopathic, congenital, paralytic, and neurofibromatosis, with the main patch of these being the idiopathic and the congenital causes of scoliosis. Idiopathic scoliosis. This is the most common type of scoliosis with no known cause. It usually affects teenagers, girls, more than boys. In adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, the curve presents before puberty and progresses during the adolescent growth spurt until skeletal growth stops. It is most common in the thoracic spine. It may also be in the lumbar spine. Congenital scoliosis. The deformity is due to an underlying skeletal abnormality. For example, a hemivertebra, fused vertebra, or absent or fused ribs. It is diagnosed on x-ray. Scoliosis may not be present at the time of the birth. Secondary scoliosis may be caused by postural, especially in adolescent girls. Compensatory, short leg or pelvic tilt due to hip contractures, or sciatic, lateral tilt of the spine due to prolapsed intervertebral disc. Scoliosis can be diagnosed with clinical exam of the spine. On posterior inspection of the spine, the patient standing identify the lateral curvature of the spine commonly in the thoracic spine, may involve the lumbar spine. Also check whether the shoulders and hips are level. Features suggestive of scoliosis include shoulder height difference. Shoulder is elevated on the side of the scoliosis convexity. Flank asymmetry. The hip sticks out on the side of the concavity. Adam's test. This is forward flexion of the spine. On standing, it will indicate a prominent rib hump. Scoliosis progresses rapidly during periods of growth and stops at skeletal maturity. Idiopathic scoliosis in a growing child, may be a mild curve, less than 25 degrees. In this scenario, you will x-ray four monthly. If there is progression, consider a corrective brace until maturity. A moderate curve, 25 to 50 degrees, offer brace or surgical correction. In a severe curve, which is more than 50 degrees, 
corrective spinal fusion is required. After growth is completed, a brace is of no value as there is no growth to allow change of shape of the spine. The only effective treatment is surgery involving instrumentation and fusion if there is poor cosmesis, respiratory impairment or pain. The effects on the patient include cosmetic, psychological impact due to poor body image, respiratory impairment, pain, more frequent in kyphosis, neurological deficit, usually in the setting of congenital scoliosis with kyphosis. The x-rays indicated are AP and lateral views. One should take note of congenital anomalies. These include wedge vertebra, hemivertebra, the congenital bar, unilateral failure of segmentation, and the bilateral failure of segmentation known as block vertebra. Remember to count the ribs on each side. An unequal number will suggest a congenital anomaly. Also, you can look at the pelvis for any signs of skeletal maturity, as the scoliosis will stop growing when there is full skeletal maturity. This is known as Riss's sign. Measure the angle of curvature known as Cobb's angle. This is depicted here. It should not be more than 10 degrees.